Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Mathieu Planche, CEO at Whitby. Hi, everyone. I'm Johan Hinaar, Chief Operation Officer at Whitby. And we are absolutely thrilled to be with you this afternoon to showcase to you our brand new robot, the Witbox. I have one right here. This is the Witbox box. And the first thing that we will do together this afternoon is unbox it. So without further ado, I'll put the installation guide aside. And there you go. Here's the wheat box. I'll bring it closer to you so you can have a good look at it. It's a bit hard to see from afar. The wheat box, first of all, is, an, is a wheat robot. It means that you can connect it to any uh, traditional set-top box or OTT boxes, like an Apple TV, a Fire TV, or a Roku. It also works with gaming consoles or smart TVs, and you can use it to test and monitor the greater experience that you deliver to your end users. What makes the Witbox truly unique, uh, first of all, is its pocket size form factor, which makes it the easiest ever uh, robot to deploy wherever you need it in the field. The other thing that makes the Witbox unique is its integrated design. At the back of the Witbox, you will find HDMI input for video acquisition, and also infrared, uh, Bluetooth, and RF4CE, or Zigbee uh, control capabilities, in order to allow the Witbox to control any type of device. Between the pocket size form factor and the integrated design, the Witbox is the easiest ever robot to deploy. It's actually so easy to install that we wanted to take the opportunity to be with you all this afternoon to do it live. Yuan, time to work your magic. Thank you, Mathieu. I'm very excited to be with you today in order to do this setup during this uh, live webinar. So just a quick word about what you can see right now. Here we have an Apple TV 4K, which is connected in HDMI to a Samsung 4K smart TV. And what we'll be doing is connect the Witbox to the Apple TV in order to be able to remotely take control of the device and also run automation on the Witbox. So first, I will connect the Witbox on the network and on the power. It automatically starts and everything uh, will, uh, the Witbox will boot up and will uh, automatically register to the Hub Cloud. Now, secondly, I will connect the device to the Witbox. So let's use the provided HDMI cable and connect it instead of the TV to the Witbox. So here I'm using HDMI out of the Witbox and I connect it to HDMI in of the Witbox. Secondly, I will use the infrared blaster, which is provided by the in the in the box and I will connect it directly using the sticker in front of the Apple TV. Also directly in the wheat box uh, we have a Bluetooth controller to be able to control for example the Android TV setup boxes as well as a Zigbee RF4C controller to control for example the Comcast X1 boxes. And ultimately I need to power up the Apple TV and for that I'm using the provided power controller that allows to power cycle remotely the device under test. Because as these devices are consumer-grade devices, it's normal when they are being used 24 7 that at some point they will crash. And if you want to remotely test or run automation on the Apple TV, it's important to be able to manage the power cycle. So let's do it together. I'm connecting the power controller to the Witbox. And now we are ready to go. Witbox controlling using infrared, doing the acquisition using HDMI, and power the Apple TV through the power controller. It's done and ready to be used. As additionally, what we can do is also use the path through connectivity in order to connect the smart TV directly through the Witbox to the Apple TV, which is very handy in a lab 
if you want to do some uh, tests while seeing what's happening on the on your device in the test at the same time. So we are fully connected. And now the only thing that is remaining is to configure the wheat box to tell it that it is being connected at the moment to a Apple TV so that we can uh, use it directly in our watch. So let me share my screen and we will do that together. Now I am in Workbench, which is our scripting and management environment. And I have a pop-up saying that the wheat box is ready and available to be configured. So let's configure it together. Here I have some drawings to show me uh, where I should uh, put each cable, which is what I have done. Just a reminder if I want to double check. Yes, everything is good. Now I have the uh, predefined factory name, which is available, and I will set up the city. So here we are right now in Paris, France. And we can move to the device configuration. Here I selected an Apple TV 4K, which is a device I configure. And I'm using the default uh, Siri remote in order to control it. Lastly, we can add the device to a cluster. So it's available in the mosaic view and available for everyone to control it and also run the test on them. Let's finish and push the configuration. And now it's ready to be used. You can see that I have my remote on the screen, the Apple TV, and I can click on menu and it's working directly. And uh, I can access the Apple TV from anywhere in the world. Here, obviously, I'm just close to it, but you can access it from anywhere. And if I press back here to go back to the uh, mosaic view, I can see all the devices which are connected to uh, different robots uh, spread out in the world. Uh, so for example, either on uh, traditional with the robots like the mini of the rackable robots or other with boxes. So we can see an Apple TV, Fire TV, a Samsung Tizen Smart TV, uh, as well as more traditional set of boxes spread around in France, uh, UK, other countries in Europe, uh, US and Canada. And what you can see right now is the live stream of the devices, but also the tests which are being automatically executed. Uh, that can be linear TV monitoring with our video quality analysis in order to check, for example, a micro blocking, uh, rubber frame or audio issue on the streams, as well as automated VOD asset checking, uh, which are typical use case deployed on any kind of robot, including uh, on the web, in the web box. And that's pretty much it. It's ready to be used. Uh, up to you, Matthew. Thanks, Johan. As you can see, installing a wheat box literally takes under five minutes. And we really wanted to show you live because we thought it was uh, the best proof of it. What's great about the wheat box is also that it comes loaded with all the great features that our customers love. Uh, you can uh, use it to perform test automation and run any kind of scenario. It comes loaded with uh, our world famous algorithms, including channel change detection, magic keyboards, and even our full audio and video quality analysis that works without a reference and in real time. Whether you need a couple of boxes for these new developers that now work from home, uh, or a hundred of them, uh, because you want to cover a large geographical area uh, to have a very fine uh, uh, monitoring technology, the Witbox truly is the perfect robot uh, to deploy uh, in a matter of days. Um, that's about it for today. Uh, this the webinar was really short uh, and it was intended to be because installing a Witbox is fast. Uh, we wanted to thank you all uh, for connecting. Thanks, Johan, for the demo.